WNY News now recently delved into the captivating world of nature-inspired art at the Roger Torrey Peterson Institute with an exclusive tour of three of their new exhibits. Maria Ferguson, our knowledgeable guide, started off the tour by providing an intimate look at the artistic endeavors of Betsy Abbott and Spencer Fraser, both her fervent admirers of the natural world, whose work is featured in the Small Worlds exhibit. Betsy Abbott is a quilt artist. She lives in the New England area, and so she creates quilts that really capture the essence of New England and, and the oceans and the tide pools and the marshes. She's very passionate about birds, and so a lot of her quilts really feature the birds that live in these areas. And then she tells us about the significance of the natural world and of the wildlife that lives within it in her own life. Betsy Abbott, a quilt artist hailing from New England, utilizes her craft to encapsulate the essence of her surroundings. Through intricately designed quilts, she beautifully captures the landscapes of New England, including its oceans, tide pools, and marshes. Abbott's passion for avian life is evident in her creations, where birds take center stage, allowing her to convey the significance of the natural world and its wildlife in her personal experiences. Her ability to translate the habitat she encounters into quilted masterpieces is a testament to her profound connection with the environment. So Betsy has an amazing sense for storytelling. So she's able to create these scenes of the, of the um, habitats that she sees in her life and that she experiences in her life that she's very passionate about. So this is a great example. This is a quilt called Shag Rock. So she spends a lot of time in nature and she loves to go kayaking. So she created this scene of an area where she likes to kayak and she's done a really wonderful job of showing us all the textures of the natural world. So we have the ocean, the rocks, and then we have the cormorants with their shiny feathers. And then we have a buoy floating in the water with seaweed below it. So she does an amazing job of creating this texture and creating a story of this moment in time that she's very passionate about and that she wants to share with us. On the other hand, Spencer Fraser, residing in the Pacific Northwest, employs paint as his medium to narrate stories of the region's habitats and wildlife. His paintings, characterized by intricate patterns, offer a unique perspective on the role of salmon as a keystone species in the ecosystem. Fraser's storytelling approach brings to light the interdependence of various species and the vital role played by these intricate relationships in sustaining the Pacific Northwest's rich biodiversity. The other artist in the exhibition Small Worlds is Spencer Fraser. He lives in the Pacific Northwest and he's a painter. But you can see that his paintings are very patterned and so he's also a storyteller. He tells us about the, the habitats and the wildlife of the Pacific Northwest and especially the role of salmon in the ecosystem and how important it is as a keystone species for all of the other wildlife. The juxtaposition of Abbott's quilted paintings and Fraser's painted quilts adds a fascinating dimension to the ex ex exhibition, creating a seamless fusion of artistic expression and environmental advocacy. The tour continued with a viewing of the Chautauqua County of Plein Air exhibit, which saw 18 artists coalesce during the Institute's Plein Air Festival to capture various outdoor locations throughout the area and put them to canvas. So one of our other exhibitions that we just recently opened is Chautauqua County and Plein Air. So all of the works in this exhibition were created during our Plein Air Festival in September. So we had a lot of artists come here to Chautauqua County to create works outside in natural light. And the works that they created are now on view here at RTPI. Maria showed how interesting it can be to see how different artists can capture the same subject in such distinct ways. Some of them are, um, so for example, these two, they're both Johnson Estate. They're completely different, but they're both amazing. And it's really the feeling of when, when if you've ever been out to Johnson Estate and seen um, the, all the land and, and the grapevines. So when you're looking from a distance, you notice how gorgeous the view is. And so you can see the lake in the distance and the buildings. Mm -hmm. But then when you get up close and really look at the grapes themselves, then you notice the way that the light falls on, on the grapes and the leaves and, and the texture and um, the, how that um, has, has a really great um, feel to it as far as the, um, just the depth and, and the, the beauty of the, the individual. Plants. So, so one um, person sees the forest, another sees the trees. Exactly. There you go. I love that. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to start using that. <laughs> mm -hmm. The tour concluded with the latest addition to the Institute's, rep in to the Institute's repertoire, the Ergo Sum, a Crow a Day ex exhibition by artist Karen Bonderchuk. This emotionally charged exhibition stems from Bonderchuk's personal journey as she coped with her mother's dementia diagnosis. Through her art, Bonderchuk not only pays homage to her mother, but also reflects on the passage of time. 
Um, so this is the third exhibition that we just recently opened. It's called Ergo Sum A Crow A Day. This exhibition is organized by the Lee Yockey Woodson Museum in Wausau, Wisconsin, and the artist is Karen Bonderchuk. So Karen's mother was diagnosed with dementia and she created this project as a way to honor her mother, but also really um, mark the passing of time. And she was thinking about the preciousness and individuality of each day. So Karen will actually be here on Friday at 5.30 for an artist talk and a book signing. And we're very excited to welcome her here and hear about her project. As a part of the exhibition, Bonderchuk will host an artist talk and book signing on Friday at 5.30 p.m. Her project has materialized into a book providing an in-depth exploration of Ergo Sum, A Crow A Day. The Roger Tory Peterson Institute eagerly anticipates Bonderchuk's presence, eager to delve into the artist's motivations, creative process, and the emotional resonance that underpins her work. Bonderchuk's project stands as a testament to the therapeutic and transformative power of art, transcending personal struggles into a universal language that resonates with audiences. The Institute is honored to provide a platform for Bonderchuk to share her story and connect with the community. The Roger Tory Peterson Institute continues to be a hub of artistic expression and environmental appreciation. Through the Small World Exhibition's dual perspectives and the emotionally charged Ergo Sum A Crow A Day, the Institute offers visitors a unique opportunity to, to explore the intersection of nature, art, and personal narratives. Attendees can witness the seamless fusion of quilting and painting, the eloquent storytelling of Fraser, and the poignant reflection on bon Bonderchuk's journey. The convergence of these exhibitions not only celebrates the diversity of artistic expression, but also serves as a reminder of the profound connections between humanity and the natural world. The Roger Tory Peterson Institute remains committed to fostering a deeper understanding of our environment through the lens of art, inviting everyone to partake in the beauty and, complex and the com complexity of the world we inhabit. 